that we are now getting to the time of year where more of us will be travelling across the channel to explore the EU with our drone in hand. Regular viewers will know that we have a video here on Geeksvarna explaining how to register your drone in the EU. There is a link in the description to that video. As a little bit of backstory, although here in the UK we essentially mirror the EU regulations when it comes to our drones, it's actually a completely separate system and you do need to register your drone within the EASA system and follow what are basically the same rules, although it is essential that you take note of some local deviations in the EU drone regulations that can occur from country to country, as well as ensuring you understand how the airspace itself works. Today, I'm going to talk you through one link, one single web page that will give you so many answers and therefore give you the confidence to take your drone on holiday or exploring the continent. There's a link in the description to this particular web page which is actually an official publication from EASA themselves. So there is some assurance there that this particular page will be accurate and give you the information you actually need. Many of us have sat through Google looking at many outdated pages from other websites all trying to be helpful but they simply haven't updated their actual information. So here in this page you basically have a list of all of the national aviation authorities along with links to their registration pages. Although do remember that once you've registered in any EASA member state, you are able to use that same registration number across all of them. So each National Aviation Authority has four links where you're able to fly, register as a drone operator, online pilot training and tests, and apply for an authorization. Now the two central links, so the register as a drone operator and online pilot training and tests, are basically the same as the UK CAA Damara scheme, giving you an operator ID, which is the register a drone operator part here, and the online pilot training and test is the flyer ID bit. Over in the EU, this is known as the A1 stroke A3 certificate. As people who have watched my full video will know, you're supposed to register in the first EASA country you're going to fly your drone in, but you're able to take the competency test, so the flyer ID bit, anywhere. Personally, I would recommend Luxembourg as the test is both free and the website itself is in full English rather than translated English via your browser. Now, some countries are still getting to grips with these new rules and actually don't have full drone registration schemes in place. So if you hit a web page where you think you should be going across to register as a drone operator, but instead you're going to the National Aviation Authority's homepage, that probably means that there isn't a drone registration specific scheme in place for that actual member state yet. But again, there should be instructions on what you need to do instead. I would suggest one of the easiest ways to deal with this would be to register in another country, which is a member state of EASA and has drone registration programs in place. Now, in each of these link blocks, I suppose we can call them, the top one here talks about where you are allowed to fly. Now, this is a particularly useful link on each of the countries because it will take you to a map that most of us in the UK, whether we're recreational or commercial pilots, will recognize very well. The airspace link takes us to that member state, that country's drone restrictions map, which will show you things like the FRZs and restrictions, meaning you cannot fly your drone in certain areas. So for instance here, we have the one for Austria. If we zoom here in on the airport, you can see again the fairly familiar language, although of course this is mainly in Austrian, but you can still recognize things like the control zone, so CTR, which they've very kindly translated. If you're competent and practiced at using apps like, I suppose, Drone Assist here in the UK, then you should be able to navigate these kind of maps as well. If we go back here and pop back into the Belgium version, again, a very useful map which has already detected my language well, so that's handy, but it does give you the option to change language at the top of them, as many of them do. And again, it shows all of the flight restriction zones which are in place. At the top of the page, it explains that this covers 27 European countries who are all EASA member states, plus four others, Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway, and Switzerland. The plus four, although they're currently outside the EU, are full members of EASA and have therefore adopted the so-called EU drone regulations. Now, one top tip here, and this is something which a lot of viewers have messaged me or emailed me directly about, is that this whole thing of where to register, because of, of course, some countries' drone registrations are rather more complicated than others, shall we say, 
while some simply don't actually seem to work at all yet. The wording from EASA is important here, whereas if you are an EU citizen or an EU legal entity, so a business, etc., you'll need to register in the member state of the country where you reside in, which makes sense. The wording in terms of UAS operators that have their principal place of business or, res or are residents of a third country, so people who are living outside of the EU or EASA member states, is the competent authority for the third country UAS operator shall be the competent authority of the first member state where the UAS operator intends to operate. Registration is valid throughout the EU. So here they're stating that it's the first country or the first member state where you intend to operate. So the most important thing, of course, is that you are registered here to fly. So don't worry too much if you register in Ireland because you intended on flying there first, but then actually ended up flying in Spain first following the registration. There isn't an insistence that it must be the first country, only that it's the first country that you intend to first operate in. Most important thing is that you are registered, of course. As with the UK, only one person from your party or family needs to register the drone itself, so i.e. the operator ID or the drone registration, but everyone else will still need to pass the A1, A3 exam and gain their certificate if applicable. Now, interestingly here, although you'll find here in the UK sub 250 gram drones that still require an operator ID. So those that have a camera don't need a flyer ID, which is the comparable document to the A1, A3 exam in the EU. Many of the EASA states will actually recommend that the training and exam be taken as well. So although it isn't a legal requirement, do keep this in mind that authorities approaching you, such as police, etc., questioning you, might actually still expect you to have a flyer ID or A1, A3 clearance. It's just worth noting that before kicking off or having a confrontation with a otherwise friendly European police officer. One other piece of advice that I would give, and this is just personal advice from someone who has flown drones in various EU countries for different reasons, consider if you are flying in a rural area or a remote location that local authorities and residents might not be completely used to seeing recreational drones flying around. Now, I'm not calling rural areas of Europe backwards or anything here. It is more about a sleepy town or village that does not see too many drone flights. So just be aware and try to alleviate anyone's concerns about your drone flight. Personally, depending on the country and the region of that country, I will often call in at a local police station and let them know that I'll be flying. This has helped me a lot in the past, but again, this is just a step that I personally take, so take that advice or leave it. Let me know in the comments below if you are thinking of flying over in Europe this summer, where you were thinking of going, and how you have found the process of registration and finding out about flight restrictions. I'd also be interested to know, from just a purely geeky fascination, what type of drone you're actually taking with you. Are you taking a sub 250 gram drone to keep things simple or perhaps as I do a mixture of drones to get the best footage depending on when and where you are whether it's A1, A3, airspace and that type of thing. If you have any other questions regarding flying in the EU or really EASA as it should be referred to in terms of airspace let me know in the comments below. Sean out.